Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Maria Forio, an Alexander Technique teacher in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She has uh, specialized to a certain extent in applying the technique uh, in the field of health and sport, and she also is a pioneer in South America in applying the technique to neurological disorders such as uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and traumatic brain injury. She works with doctors and athletes and is the head of training of her own school in Buenos Aires. Maria, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. It's a pleasure to be talking to you today um, with all our audience. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And in a moment, in a moment, we're going to talk about specifically the application of the technique uh, to health in general. Yes. But yes. before we get into that, could you give our listeners a very short description of the Alexander technique? Alexander is about changing the way that we think ourselves, mm-hmm. and all the rest all start with ourselves. That's why Alexander say the use of the self. Mm-hmm. So the idea being that when you change the way you think about yourself, say in movement, that's going to actually change the quality of the movement, right? Yes. When, yeah. when we change the way of thinking, we change the way that we sense, mm-hmm. the way that we feel, and the way that we move. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's to change the way that we react to the different stimulus of life that Mm -hmm. come from inside of us and from outside of us. Mm -hmm. So my sense of of people who are athletes in general is that their idea of getting better is to do more, more training, tougher training, that kind of thing. Uh, it sounds like your approach, if you were working with an athlete, would be a bit different. Is that right? Yes. Well, Alexander is to do less. To do <laughs> less. So so an athlete listening to that would wonder, what, what does that mean exactly? And how can that help me? Well, I talk about uh, that we are a global, a holistic intelligence, and the person learns to move, to exercise, that is no a word that comes from Alexander, but I was very used in a sport, with the less effort, just with what only the mind and the body need. Mm-hmm. And by less effort, do you mean um, less effort that's not useful? Yes, the unnecessary effort. That's why Alexander talk, talk about integrate the different parts of the body in another way. When, for example, if I'm going to run, I know that first I need to coordinate head, neck, and back, mm-hmm. but not to overuse my legs, not to overuse my thighs, not to overuse my shoulder. This is to reorder the whole body, the puzzle that we are, and this a specific part, if I am going to use your arms, have to be in coordination with your whole torso, with your head, and with your legs. It's all the time to check that you are not doing unnecessary contraction, unnecessary effort in this part. Mm -hmm. And so when you have uh, an athlete come to you for lessons or a group, group class or whatever, How do you approach working with them? Do you start in an in um with them in their actual athletic activities, or would you do more sort of chair work or table work that sort of thing first? Well, uh, really, it depends on the day and the person. But um, I like to work to given the the individual a lot of. uh, sense of motor experiences you know it's like when we learn to walk mm-hmm. and uh and then it's not only in the chair in the walking is that the person can roll uh can sit from from a mat or can bend 
in, in different in different uh, activities where the person start to send first how much he tends his body in excess, how much his mind is working unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then, I mean, do you encounter very much resistance from athletes to that approach? Well, um, there are some athletes that say, no, I don't like to think because mm -hmm. they go into just doing, a uh, learn a, a stereotyped technique. But others are, well, more open, more flexible mentally first. And then they, they like to change because they see, maybe they don't send, you know, at the beginning, they don't send consciously what uh, we are showing to them. But they, they can understand when they are running, when they are exercising, when they are doing the performance, because it's, more, it's easier, it's faster, it, the, the breathing can by itself, or the movement is easier. They go faster, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really when they do that they understand the difference. Mm -hmm. So, so part of how you teach might be to give them some direct experience using your hands, for example, to guide them, and then they'll have the experience, and then at some point, maybe they'll say, "Well, this seems like a good a good thing to pursue." Is that is that kind of what you're saying here? Yeah, exactly, because they experience that the body is working in a more intelligent way, the mind doesn't get fatigued so easily um well they want to come back to have this experience you know mm -hmm. um i have athletes for example that they could run for a long time without stopping like when they run in the mountain uh, but they could after the lessons and then well they want to keep improving they want this difference in the quality of the way that they do mm -hmm. so i I guess that what you're doing in a way is tapping into um athletes' desire to get to do better and you're yes. showing them a way that maybe they had never considered before but No what, Yeah. Because uh, it's taught in the reverse way that they need to try hard to be better. Yes. Um and really is is so simple. You know, it's just to allow the natural function in our mind and body work. Uh, it's not to, the mind doesn't like to work in excess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's very subtle, the good thinking. You just does, don't need to try to do anything. It's just the, in, this internal decision of what you want to achieve and focus in this process in an order way. You need to do one step at a time and following the next, like Alexander said in the books. And then you did the way without realizing. Mm -hmm. And how, how would you say, just shifting uh, gears a little bit here, how would you say the, the technique can be helpful for general overall <laughs> health? Well, it's a lot because I've, I find that mainly the cause is the same, is this stumbling block attitude or this lack of communication with our reason. For example, in Parkinson's disease, I can see that it's a, it's a main reason there, um, a common one that all the patients are always very worried, very tense, and they are in a vicious cir circle where they are thinking um, well, my, my, my teaching is there to, to teach them that they can break this way of thinking all the time in the same way um, that affects their nervous system, affects the way that they can walk properly. They are all the time tense. Um, well, you know, to have a better quality of life. And, and I can see improvements in, in, in the nervous system because I believe that the way that we think determines the way that all our brain works. And it's again giving them these multiple 
sense senses working together in the actions in the physical actions where they realize that they can think different that they don't need to be worried you know because the main problem i find is that our mind is not logical and then all the time you are working with these fantasies these preconcepts that are no doesn't have fundament you know but you need to show in the in the people with neurological problems it's a little hard harder you know because well it's reinforced this kind of obsessive thinking all the time that they cannot get out you know mm -hmm. but uh, you show the difference you show and um, and people start to trust on you because they see they feel better they see in themselves that they can move the arm they re recover the natural flexibility that that they can sleep better um you know is in this uh, daily actions that we do constantly mm -hmm. that they improve so um here here's a question that um, maybe people have asked you before but yeah. the way you describe you know helping people change their their thinking affecting their lives how does what you do differ from what say psychoanalysis might do or psych or psychological or psychotherapy let's say how, how does what you do differ from that because those those ideas tend to want to change your thinking too right yes uh, but there's something there's something a little different about the alexander technique it's very different because always our thinking is show in our body in mm -hmm. our movements and how our our heart is talking to us how is the the muscle tone in our body our skin skin talks first before our logical thinking mm -hmm. and then when you give them this conscious sensation that they start to feel different they start to sense more their body they feel better with themselves because you know, the body is like a channel of our beam mm -hmm. in some way. Um, but, and then they start to be more conscious of their sensations or, and they don't want to come back to the tension, you know, to, to this uncomfortable way of sitting or, or that they cannot move. Mm -hmm. It's through this conscious sensation always with the conscious thinking. And then you integrate what is conscious and what is not conscious. Mm -hmm. So w when you work with a student and help them um, and they take that information into an activity like walking or running or whatever, they're getting very direct <laughs> feedback about that this is helpful. Whereas if you go to a counselor or a psychotherapist, they might say, you know, change your thinking in this way, and it might take weeks or months before anything happens that you could notice, or maybe you're not, you're just not sure. But it sounds like you give people something that they can pretty quickly tell is helpful. Was, it, would yes. that be fair to say? Yes, specifically because I work all the time with mirrors, mm -hmm. and then. Um, you say to the person, well, where you are now, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you doing now, what are you sensing? And you know the person sense that it's straight, mm -hmm. although we are not straight, I say with a good posture. Uh, I don't like to talk about posture really, but that is standing up mm -hmm. uh, or is there in a way that what he's sensing is not what he's really doing. And then, well, I ask to to watch themselves in the mirrors, uh, wow, they start to doubt. There is the, the start of the new thinking, you know, a new idea. What am I doing here? I'm doing what I'm sensing. Mm -hmm. And then, well, it's constantly this, give this consciousness through the visual, the senses, the listening of his body, all the senses work together. But um, the visual aspect is very important mm -hmm. because, you know, we, we never pay attention too much to ourselves during the day the person don't stop and look in the mirror really and then in alexander lessons we stop 
um, just stop no, in a static way. We just take the attention to watch ourselves in the mirror, mm -hmm. what we are doing. Um, from there, it's this time that where the person start to stop what he was doing before mm -hmm. and act, think, move, sense differently. Right. So even though the work you do is in some ways primarily helping people change their thinking to start with, the results are so grounded in reality, reality that they can sense or they can see using a mirror that in a way it's it's a it's a very powerful teaching technique right for that yes. for that reason because you know in neurology it's called neural mirror mirror neurons mm -hmm. um well it's our hands our connection with the students uh, the mirror is all these new environment new perceptions that appear that are essential because the person for example start to bend in a, in a more coordinated well, um, well, he feels, he sends that he's not straight. I mean, working in a, be in a better way with the back and the head, neck and back. Mm -hmm. But uh, when he look in the mirror, he surprised himself, you know, because he realized that, yeah, he's, he's better. He, his back is, is much better in a space, although he sends the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then he start to believe on you, um, right? Well, and I and think. I suppose also fairly quickly, other people who know the person will comment on what they see. Yes. Which, yes. So. Yeah. So, is there anything else that you would like to add to this general topic, Alexander technique and health, that we haven't covered? Um, well, no, I like to say that um, it comes from your experience. As as a student, I explore a lot with myself. I'm, I'm really, Alexander taught me to live in a better way. And it's what I transmit to my students, you know, and to my family. Mm -hmm. I, I learn all by experience. It's this that cannot be explained and nobody can teach you. It's something that you... You sense, you think. Is that um, while well, I, I just simply like uh, to give my own experience to my students. Um, I really love what I do. Alexander, for me, was a, a, a genius. And more in these times, I think it's so important that that people come to our world, <laughs> Alexander mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. to have a, a better life, um, a consciousness. We, mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I think the hardest people, hardest thing for people to who have not had experience with the Alexander technique is to really um, accept the idea that someone can help you change the way you think, and that's going to produce a concrete <laughs> result. I think that's the part that's hard for people to accept who haven't had the experience. Do, do you find that as well? Yeah, but um, um, general people um, got really tired of trying different techniques and it didn't work, you know. Right. Um, well, come here um, and notice, feel, sense the difference, you know, um, and well, and, and they then they believe. It's by experience that they believe. But uh, it's something that goes together, teacher and student, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to believe what you do, and the teachers believe on himself specifically. You, know? right. you need to believe that what, he, what he's doing is good. But this is responsibility of the teacher. That's why I say if you don't have this experience and, and you don't find this balance on yourself, you can we teach that really because right, you know right. we transmit uh, our right. our being we we connect with others mainly unconsciously <laughs> all, right right all happen in a in front of our inside you know so i mean you you raise a really interesting point there that people you people who teach that you can't really be 
a, a, an effective teacher of the Alexander yeah. Technique if you yeah. haven't yourself gone through the very processes that you're teaching. No, exactly. Yeah. And how to have a balance psychologically, too. I, For example, in my own experience before, and at the same time that I was doing the Alexander training, I, I did psychotherapy, you mm-hmm. know, because, you know, uh, Alexander is, is, is a kind of psychotherapy because mm-hmm. all, all your inheritance appeared there, your muscle tone, in, in, in the way that you think. Um, well, um, it's so important to work with the whole being and implies only all this personality that you inherit Mm -hmm. to be conscious and decide from there what you want to do Mm -hmm. to keep Mm -hmm. creating your own personality and and the yeah it's priority to have this balance as a teacher psychologically emotionally physically and mentally because it's what you transmit with your hands with your sense that is the deepest aspect of ourselves is this primitive Reflexes acting there, as Alexander talked. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this primary reflex that we really developed with Alexander. The, um, now the neurology is starting to discover something about what Alexander did. I, I think uh, without knowing anatomy, neurology, uh, Matthias Alexander discovered something big. Mm-hmm. How the, the whole human being behave and how we can improve the way that we are and the others mm-hmm. yeah and well I, yeah i i agree completely with that i think developments in neuroscience in general are very much in line with alexander's ideas although he was not of course trained in that field yes so, well you know uh maria i think this would be a good time to bring our conversation to a close Yes, um, thank you. I my guest today has been Maria Foriel. I hope I pronounced <laughs> that right. Who you is, did so well. <laughs> uh, I do my thank best. You. Uh, who is uh, an Alexander Technique teacher in Buenos Aires? And if you if you're in that area and um, and what we've talked about intrigues you, I'll put a link to her website and you can contact her. Uh, She also teaches not just in Buenos Aires, but in other locations in Argentina, I believe. So if you live in Argentina, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, get hold of her. I'll also put a a link to a website that'll tell you more about the Alexander Technique and will enable you to find a teacher anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Maria, thank you so much for this. It's been really fun. Yeah, the same. Thank you so much. 